would this parable sound if it was your father or mother or aunt or uncle, brother or sister, or even yourself speaking? It might go like this. While he was far off, his father saw him and was filled with skepticism. And he thought, I wonder what this kid wants from me now. So the father sat down, and while his son came to the door and knocked, he waited. The son knocked again. Finally, the third time, the father got up and opened the drawer. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father, turning to those in the house, well, look who's finally come crawling back. He blew all his bankroll, and now he's coming around looking for a handout. The gathered ones chuckled at the son. So the father, finally speaking to the son, said, so what do you want? I've already given you your inheritance because you couldn't wait for me to die. And now you think you want more? It took your mother and me a lifetime of work to save that much, and you blew it all in six months. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. You think you can waltz back in here and pick up where you left. It sure is a different story. And it certainly is a story that sounds more real to our ears. But Jesus wasn't talking about the real world. Jesus was telling the parable to teach us about the kingdom of God. Jesus told this parable to challenge reality. God and God's kingdom are not like our reality. Our earthly parents and other authority figures in our life might give us lectures, but that's not what God does. We tend to give the prodigals in our life, whether it's children, neighbors, friends, or relatives, uh, we can give them the cold shoulder sometimes because of their behavior. We make them prove themselves. We make them jump through hoops before they can fully return to the fold. And even then, many never live down their mistakes. We don't celebrate their return. So often, we put up barriers. It's easy to see that judgmental behavior would hurt those in need of forgiveness and reconciliation. How would that kind of behavior feel to newcomers in our congregation or to those who return after years of absence? When you and I grumble and fuss and make judgments about scruffy strangers, newcomers, our own wayward children, or our estranged parents, we lose out too. Look at the father in my version of the parable. Not only does he miss having a celebration with his family, he misses out on a loving, caring, forgiving relationship with his son. We miss, on, miss out on that, too, when we turn away from others. When we turn away so wrapped up in our work or in our chit-chat with our friends and relatives after <clears throat> worship, what we think we know about another situation, or when we worry about getting all the chores done rather than being open to others in the moment, and we, well, we're rather like that older brother in the parable, and we miss out, like he did, on the celebration of just living in relationship, relationship with God and those around us. When we put up barriers and keep others at arm's length, 
when we withhold our acceptance of others, we often forget to accept ourselves, and we miss out on a lot of joy. We all need love, forgiveness, and acceptance. When we hold back for others, we really end up holding it back from ourselves. And that can hurt us more than we know in the, in the, in the moment. The hard question is, what can we do about it? The answer is you and I on our own can do very little that's effective. We as human beings are always more ready to, to give the prodigal, whoever they may be, a good lecture rather than forgiveness. We are always more ready and more comfortable to put up barriers between us and them rather than welcoming and sharing a meal like those in Jesus' parable did. The situation is not hopeless. We can do very little out of human willpower, but God can, working in us and through us. As we stay connected to Jesus' love and begin to put our trust in God in all things, we can react in better ways. That wayward son had it all worked out on how he was going to get back into his father's favor and the good graces of the family. And the father didn't let him get out more than a few words. He broke into his well-laid plans and excuses and through a celebration instead. That is not necessarily our way, but it is how God is. God in Christ gives us love and forgiveness and a new beginning, not once, but every single day. God's way with us gives us a new way to be for others. <clears throat> a while ago, a man named Lee Shapiro, who was a retired judge, lived in the San Francisco area. And over many years on the bench, one of the lessons he learned was what an important force love was in difficult situations. <clears throat> Lee became not, not the hanging judge, but the hugging judge. A bumper sticker on his car read, don't bug me, hug me. He made hugging kits that contained 30 embroidered hearts that said on the outside, a heart or a hug. At a conference, the media challenged him, saying it was easy to give out hugs there at that conference. And they challenged him to give hugs on the streets of San Francisco. Followed by a news crew, Lee went out into the street. First, he approached a woman walking by. Hi, I'm Lee Shapiro, the hugging judge. I'm giving out these hearts in exchange for a hug. Sure, she replied. Mm, said the commentator. Too easy. So Lee looked around and he saw a parking meter reader who was being given a hard time by the owner of a BMW to whom she was giving a ticket. He marched up to her, <coughs> hand through in tow, and said, 
You look like you could use a hug. I'm the hugging judge, and I'm offering you this heart for a hug. She accepted. The television commentator threw down one final challenge. Look here. Here comes a bus. San Francisco bus drivers are the toughest, crabbiest, meanest people in the whole town. Let's see you get him to give you a hug. <clears throat> we took the challenge. As the bus pulled up to the, cur the curb, Lee said to him, Hi, I'm Lee Shapiro, the hugging judge. This has got to be one of the most stressful jobs in the whole world. I'm offering hugs to people today to lighten the load a little. Would you like one? The six foot two, 230 pound bus driver got out of his seat, stepped down, and said, Why not? Lee hugged him and gave him a heart and waved goodbye as the bus pulled out. The TV crew was amazed. Finally, the commentator said, I have to admit, I'm impressed. Judge Lee's hugs may seem simplistic, but accompanied by his understanding words, with his forethought in the tangible gift of the embroidered heart, and the hug. The message rang out loud in a world needing care and kind words and unconditional love. God calls us to celebrate our relationship with him and with each other. Jesus' unconditional love for us opens us up to let go a little so that we can be caught up in the joy that God's love gives us and those around us. The joy we experience can help us celebrate with others, not only those who are just like us, but celebrate be present with each person we meet. And the joy that we experience can help us not only celebrate with those others, but can help catch them with God's surprising love too. Amen.